that have received forms of ID considerations for European and Latin standards. It covers the current status of uh, patent prosecution before the Japanese Patent Office, and key falls and amendments of law coming into force soon, and activities to the false industrial revolution. This shows the current status of patent prosecution before the Japan Patent Office. Uh, some time ago, like 10 years or more, the uh, Japan Patent Office was notorious for its slowness, low patent grant rate, and the <coughs> difficulty to, to get a patent. But uh, in now, after 10 years or so, it has changed drastically. And this shows how the JPO is performing now. The for more examinations shown here, uh, after requesting the examination to the first office action, it takes in average 9.3 months. Which is really fast, but on top of that, there are various means to accelerate examination. Accelerated examination, normal accelerated examination, and super accelerated examination. And the average months before the office action is 0.3. Compared to the accelerated examination by the European Patent Office, 2.3 is more or less equal. But uh, this one is very fast. And with regard to the pendency before grant, the JPO has 14.1 months before grant, and as opposed to the pendency at other patent examination authorities, this is the fastest. So uh, what was true about the JPO 10 years ago is not true anymore. This shows a patent grant rate by five major patent examining, examining authorities. The patent grant rate by the JPO is here. Now it's about 75%. Very high. The highest among the five. But it was below 50% 10 years or so ago. It jumped up, and the grant, patent grant rates by other authorities are shown here. Uh, there is a general tendency to increase the patent grant rate, except for the Korean uh, Patent Office. And here is the patent grant rate by the Chinese uh, authority. So the grant rate is higher than 50% any other office, but the Japanese patent office is the highest. This is also from the annual report of the JPO. And this, the pink bars show the number of patent applications filed at the JPO. The number is decreasing since the year 2004, and the decrease still continues. And this is my speculation, but I, I speculate that this is because the budget for the patent prosecution of the applicant is somehow limited or fixed, and the Japanese companies are filing more applications outside Japan and reducing the number of applications of cost for filing in Japan. And the Blue one is a number of requests for examination, and yellow is the number of registered patents. So the yellow bar is becoming higher, while the pink bar is becoming lower, which means the patent grant rate is becoming higher. And after the applications filed in 2013, this result is temporary because there are a lot of applications being still exempt, which is great. It 
strong laws about the computer software uh, friendliness of the Jap Japanese patent examination. With regard to the patentable subject matter, a method to be performed in collaboration with a computer or a hardware is a patentable subject matter, which is not, is only a law of the nature, a presentation of information, human mental activities, mathematical operations, a state, which does not exert an action to a computer. So unless the invention falls in this category, all the technical idea is eligible for patent. Of course, an inventive step or other question must be satisfied. This requirement is more or less similar to the requirements at the EPO, which requires technical effects, or USPTO, which requires usefulness. But uh, I have an impression that the Japanese standards are more generous about the eligibility of computer software inventions than uh, other uh, patent offices. So the most versatile and computer software friendly jurisdiction in the world is the Japanese examination. And I'd like to draw your attention to some pitfalls, especially for uh, non Japanese applicants. The first one is the limitation brought by co-ownership. When a patent application or patent or any other intellectual property rights are co-owned by two parties or more, uh, how to handle this it depends on the jurisdiction. And according to the Japanese laws, uh, granting a license to a third party or assignment of right requires consent of the other co-owner. And uh, uh, filing an application or an appeal must be done jointly with the other co-owner. These, these requirements are sometimes unexpected for European or uh, non-Japanese applicants. So it is very important to note this difference and these limitations. And another uh, difference of people is re relates to the remuneration to inventors. And it relates you know, when the European company has a joint venture with a Japanese company or even a branch uh, corporation in Japan and has an inventor, a Japanese inventor, or regardless of the nationality, the invention made in Japan. The, the patent law uh, provides, Japanese patent law provides, that the ownership, original ownership of the invention belongs to the inventor unless there is a specific uh, agreement between the inventor and the employer. And <clears throat> therefore, it is strongly recommended to have company rules in line with guidelines issued by the Navy to reduce the risk of possible disputes with the employee inventor regarding the ownership of the invention and the remuneration to be paid by the inventor. The Japanese society is not a litigious society, as you may know, but uh, there are many litigations. Uh, each employee inventor uh, filed a lawsuit against the employer demanding remuneration for the inventions. So this is our this exceptional area of law. So it is very important to be aware of this uh, remuneration thing. And, uh, I'm sorry, uh, but uh, I do not have a page for uh, other subjects, but I'd like to mention a little bit uh, other pitfalls I'd like to draw your uh, attention, uh, which is the uh, translation error uh, uh, You can find a patent application in any language as long as you find a Japanese translation in Japanese, uh, 
within a limited time. And the examination is performed in the Japanese language. The problem is that when there is a mistake in translation, normally the, the Japanese law allows you to correct your mistranslation, but it, there is a time limit for that. After uh, final office action is issued or after a patent is registered, there is another limitation not to change the scope of the granted patent or claim the patent. And then in that situation, even if you can uh, explain that it is a translation error, the, the JPO or court says that yes, it's an error, but you are not allowed to correct it. And that can cause a serious problem. Therefore, it's an old uh, conventional uh, thing to be careful about translation, but that is still an important point to be careful. There are some amendments of law coming into force uh, to facilitate the uh, enforcement of patent rights. Uh, one is uh, on site ins inspection. The court can order independent specialists to visit the site of the alleged infringer and collect evidence relevant to the dispute. This is one change. And the second one is the damage calculation. And, uh, you, uh, you can calculate the damage based on the number of products being sold by the infringer and the expected profit for a unit of product being sold. However, this cannot exceed the capacity of the production capacity of the patentee. That puts an important uh, limitation on the damage. And when the number exceeds the production capacity of the patentee, that part was kind of lost from damage demand, demand of damage. However, this was, uh, the law was amended to apply the royalty for the portion which exceeded the production capacity of the patentee. So the, the damage will be higher than the damage calculated before correction of the law. And another point was in camera proceedings. So before ordering submission of evidentiary documents, the court can have a third party expert examine the documents in an in camera proceeding and determine the relevance of the documents. So in infringement lawsuit, for example, uh, when there is an important evidence in question, uh, the court must decide whether the evidence is relevant or not. And who can decide the relevance of the evidence? That was an important question. Uh, previously, only the concerned parties or the parties could decide whether that was relevant or not, which means that the evidence must be shown to the other party which is, of course, the concerned party, and which is disadvantageous for the holder of the evidence. And in order to solve this uh, problem, the law was amended so that the court can assign a third party to decide whether it is relevant to the case or not. Some comments about the activities to lead the fourth industrial revolution. And uh, the guide to licensing negotiation involving SEPs were published last year. And uh, they call it a guide, not a guideline, because it doesn't have our binding in the force. And the, the purpose is to facilitate licensing negotiations and based on the framework represented by the uh, CJU and the court decision in various countries and actual practice in connection with SEP disputes. So this is a kind of encyclopedia collecting how the SEP disputes have been handled in various uh, jurisdictions. And the NETI, 
uh, Ministry of uh, Economy and etc. Uh, considers it very important because uh, under the post industrial revolution, many uh, industries which perform their business separately before are involved. For example, the, the car manufacturers are uh, inventing uh, telecom related inventions and doing business in telecom and the house appliances have IoT and uh, all these business, not only these, um, many businesses are involved and they might have uh, issue of patent infringement they might have to negotiate for license, but they have very different backgrounds for license negotiation and infringement. Therefore, we need a standard to, to be respected when people are involved in this type of negotiation. That is the purpose of this type. And one more thing it was the foundation of the International Arbitration Center in Portugal. And this is the first uh, arbitration center of this kind in Asia, which means the uh, arbitration center dedicated to international IP related disputes. And the goals are to, to have a place of arbitration in Asia and <coughs> arbitrators. Uh, there is a potential list of potential arbitrators uh, where the parties can choose, and this list includes attorneys or its judges or from the US, Europe, China, and many other places of the world. Here comes the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.